Well, we mentioned the Bank of Canada is set to make another interest rate decision tomorrow. Higher rates are raising plenty of questions about what happens to the Canadian economy in 2024. And as we saw with Canadian banks during their recent quarterly earnings, some of the big players are setting aside more money for potentially bad loans. Gordon Nixon spent more than a decade leading Royal Bank as CEO. He's also an active board member with BlackRock, George Weston, and BC, the parent company of this network, where he serves as chair. And he joins us now with more on his outlook. Gord, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Delighted to be with you. Uh, how would you describe from your vantage point the business environment right now? Uh, I think in Canada, it's very tough. Um, I think we've got a lot of headwinds in this country um, that uh, you know put us at a real disadvantage. Our economic performance is very weak. It's negative. And if you factor in the, uh, the fact that we've got a million more people in this country than we did a year, a year and a half ago, our, our, you know, clearly we're in a recessed economy. Um, our productivity is not great. Uh, we've got a lot of, you know, leading uh, economies of the world like China and India, Saudi Arabia, who are, who are, you know, we've got challenges with, to say the least. Um, even the United States, I think, is paying less attention to us both in terms of trade and, and certainly security, where, where, you know, we're we're being left out a little and and. And, you know, I think our, our attractiveness as a, for, from a foreign investment perspective has declined um, uh, somewhat. And, um, and I think it leaves us with a lot of challenges and headwinds uh, in terms of how we generate, you know, economic growth and how we improve our productivity, both of which are pretty much at the lowest of the um, of significant Western economies. Some of those themes uh, came up recently during the fall economic update. How do you feel about how Ottawa is addressing the economy right now? I think there's some significant policy changes that have to take place around things like foreign investments, tax levels, spending levels, etc. Having said that, I think, you know, to some degree, we're boxed in such a large percentage of our spending. Uh, you know, we talk about deficit reduction and how we're going to be more disciplined around spending. At least, you know, uh, Minister Friedland mentioned there, spoke to that in the economic update. Um, you know, we're, we've, we've got a lot of challenges and lack a lot of flexibility. Interest rates are higher. Our interest costs are are you know something that we can't control healthcare costs continue to be you know a very large percentage of of expenditures so we don't have the kind of flexibility um that uh, you think in terms of cost reductions we've got to find ways to grow our economy uh and right now unfortunately our economy is not growing and uh, uh and you know it, it is a two-pronged um problem that has to be addressed uh, but, you know, economic growth, um, you know, we were negative at last quarter. The U.S. was significantly positive. You know, that, that discrepancy leaves us in a very, you know, challenged position. You, uh, you alluded to our productivity, and on a related note, there are, there are constant questions about Canada's competitiveness, and, and that has been coming up right. again recently as well. What are some at least ideas, if not the recipe for improvement there? Well, first of all, we've got to create a better environment for foreign investment. I mean, this is a country that, you know, to some degree has been built on foreign investment, and we're doing everything to, to discourage it in, in some ways. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, industrial policy, we've been very, you know, we're very quick to, um, you know, put up barriers or penalties towards industries that, you know, are, are part of Canada's lifeblood. I mean, you know, we've got special taxes on banks, you know, banks, some of whom are, you know, their share prices are down from where they were five years ago and they're paying excess surplus taxes. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, whether it's the telco industry, I know I have some biases here, but oil and gas, you know, mining, um, you know, food retailing, et cetera. We, we seem to want to, you know, go after industries that, that have the ability to grow and to, you know, to be a strength for Canada. And I think that's, you know, that that's clearly one of our challenges. I think, you know, our tax levels are very high. Our regulatory levels are very high. Um, and even, for, as I say, from a, a, from a, a, a global perspective, we seem to have, have, you know, we're not encouraging um, investment from a lot of areas that are important in terms of investing in Canada. And without that investment, you know, it's hard to generate higher rates of, of productivity.
Those are some big long-term things that obviously are going to stay on the agenda. Uh, in, in the interim term, uh, getting back to banks, uh, the bank you used to run, RBC, is attempting to get to the, the finish line of a, of a deal with HSBC Canada. Uh, the Conservative leader, Pierre Polyev, wants the Feds to block that deal. What's your view on what that deal, just getting back to that competition subject, right. what that would mean for competition? Um, I think that would be a mistake um, for, you know, some of the reasons that I just mentioned. Um, and um, um, I think, firstly, I, I don't think it will be blocked. I mean, there's no rationale to block it. I mean, it's been, I think, approved by the Competition Bureau. There's no significant reason to do it other than the politics of, uh, of um of, you know, perception of, of, of less competition. Uh, but again, it's it's one of those things which I think from a policy perspective just doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. If we want to encourage people to invest in this country, you know, we've got to, you know, have open, you know, markets, open opportunities. And to make a decision like that, you know, from a, you know, from a pure political perspective, it may make sense politically, but it doesn't make sense from a policy perspective. Um, even though, you know, when you look at what's happened to bank shares since that acquisition was made, I don't think it would be negative from the bank's perspective, um, but it certainly would be wrongheaded from a policy perspective. Um, this is not a significant bank merger, it's, you know, in terms of market share, et cetera. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just not overly relevant. All right, well, watch to see the, the finish line.